Welcome to a new video series we decided to put together for you based upon a topic that we are both incredibly passionate about that's both important for for us as individuals and us collectively in this time. And so this video series is entitled Soul Centric Development, Finding the Truth at the Center of the Image You Were Born With. Um, and so it's gonna highlight a lot of different topics around soul centric development. And really this is an intro video that's gonna highlight um, some particular tools that we can use to help map our process um, through soul centric development, see where we're at in our own psycho spiritual and ecocentric development process. Yeah, thank you, Hayden. Um, we wanted to talk about this both because it's something that we're both intellectually and conceptually interested mm -hmm. in, and also because it's something that we are using and utilizing personally along our mm -hmm. own journeys of psycho spiritual development as a very helpful tool for mapping where we are currently located mm -hmm. and also understanding the full map of healthy, mature right. psycho-spiritual development. Exactly. And in this series, we're going to be using a lot of terms such as soul-centric, ecocentric, psycho-spiritual. We're going to be talking about different stages of development, naming those stages. So we figured we should put together this first intro video, um, give you guys an incredibly helpful and valuable tool that we've been utilizing that was developed by um, a genius of a man, Bill Plotkin. I highly recommend you get um, any of his books, really. But one we're going to be highlighting here where this tool comes from is called Nature and the Human Soul. And this tool that we've been referring to is what's called the Soul Centric Development Wheel. Um, and it basically has eight stages that we go through in a soul centric, um, holistic development, ideally in the ideal culture that can hold this. Unfo unfortunately, in the culture we exist in now, we've lost a lot of uh, these practices. Um, we've lost a lot of our elders. We've lost a lot of our wisdom that can help us move us along. And primarily, we can see that majority of society uh, is stuck in stage three, which is early adolescence, which will show you this wheel and it will come up on the screen for you. But it's early adolescence stage, we're sort of stuck there and we, we get wrapped up in what's called egocentric development. So focusing on our own personal development in isolation from everybody else. But this whole wheel is really a, um, it, it's a map of psycho-spiritual soul-centric development and he has put this together based upon uh, many many years of study and also personal investigation through being a therapist and also a vision fast guide uh, for Animus Valley Institute and he didn't just put together this this uh, wheel or this uh, map on a whim. This is really based on a lot of ancient truths. Um, this is sort of that story of the hero's journey and the development of the psyche, the development of the soul that we can see across time and across space from all of our ancient stories, legends, myths, um, and our like religious studies. They all refer to the same type of development. Um, and so we wanna offer this tool to you so you can see where you're at in the process, what stage you're in and what tasks are necessary for you to find your true soul gifts so you can occupy your unique niche in the world, in this collective, in this time in which it's incredibly valuable that we each find these things and we can offer these gifts in a way that can create um, true healing and growth and potential um, in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Hayden. So maybe let's start by actually outlining the, the eight stages. Um, and just to also note that between each of these eight stages, mm -hmm is thought of as a threshold crossing or a passage, right. um, an initiatory process. Mm -hmm. um, and so true elders and holders of community um, would have the task and the role of supporting folks within the community mm -hmm. to acknowledge and understand when they have completed the developmental tasks of that particular life stage, soul-centric mm -hmm. life stage, 
and therefore are ready to mark that in a particular way of initiation to move from that life stage to the next life stage mm -hmm. and to do that in an artful and thoughtful way it's not pushing someone mm -hmm. who isn't necessarily complete mm -hmm. with those tasks or having an idea of chronological age mm -hmm. that someone should or is at a place where they're not it's very much the mystery speaking through the individual and as that individual has completed in a way that others around them and elders around them can recognize the tasks are completed the initiatory process or the passage is actually more of a celebration and an acknowledgement of others in the community that those that life phase has been attained has been successfully um, completed and so that process of initiation is to support and celebrate the movement a letting go a severance of the old life phase and a recognition and a moving towards the tasks of the new life phase that they're stepping into. Exactly. And like you're saying, it's not really based upon time or age or, you know, what where your parents believe you should be or or where your parent where you think that your child should be. It's really based upon what they call like a soul center of gravity. So what is really pulling this individual or you in this time? So what are you drawn towards? Are you seeking like your own gifts? Are you trying to find yourself? You know, are you wanting to explore more? Are you wanting to engage in the world? You know, are you wanting to offer your gifts? Have you found your gifts? Do you know what your gifts are? And now you're struggling to try to occupy those gifts in your body and bring them into form. Knowing where your center of gravity is, what's pulling you, what's pushing you, what you've learned in your past that's pushing you forward and what you're seeking, what's drawing you into the future, you can mark where you're at in the wheel. And if you're going through a transition um, phase in which you may want to choose to mark that through ceremony or through some sort of um, initiatory uh, process or celebration or mark that for others if it's a, a child um, or an adolescence that's going through this and you want to honor where they're at so as you can see on the screen I'm pulling up now the the um, the wheel here uh, the soul centric wheel and you can see we start out here in the east this is the place of the birth and the death this is the innocent in the nest and you can see here this wheel is really helpful in showing you what the tasks are what the gift is, the gift is what, it, what are other people receiving from someone in this stage and to know that each stage that you're at is the best stage you could be in. This is mm -hmm. absolutely crucial. You have to fully embody the stage that you're in and not want to be, let's say you're in stage three, the thespian at the oasis and you're like, wow, I just want to be a master in the grove of the elders. You can't just jump across the wheel. You have to embody fully where you are, accept where you are, and see it as a true gift that this is an incredible time and place to be in. Mm -hmm. So get, jumping back into the wheel, you see we have the innocence in the nest, the task, ego formation. I'm not gonna read all of these. You can kind of see this on your screen. Center of gravity is spirit. And you. Mm -hmm. And the gift towards others is luminous presence, mm -hmm. which I'm sure anyone who spent time with an infant, a toddler, understands that gift towards others. Yep. The infant, the toddler, doesn't really know anything else other than being in mm -hmm. spirit as a center of gravity and radiating presence. There isn't, because the task hasn't been completed of ego formation, there isn't a sense of separate self. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of presence with mm -hmm. all of living earth and all of surroundings mm -hmm. that is really a true gift to others. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the gifts are really beautiful because this shows that like every stage that we're in is incredibly valuable and this is what creates a holistic beautiful community we're not all striving to be like someone else or to be anywhere than where we are now and being where we are now is a gift to others mm -hmm. is a gift showing those lessons living and fully embodying where you're at um, you're you're offering a unique gift and all those gifts are important for all of us in those stages to experience and this is why we need to have like cross-pollination we need to have be in community mm -hmm. with people of different ages right. you know in different stages yes. in life right. different backgrounds because we can receive those gifts 
and incorporate them into the lessons that we are uh, learning in that time. Mm -hmm. So we can move into stage two, middle childhood, the explorer in the garden. Stage three, thespian at the oasis. Um, stage four, the wanderer in the cocoon. Stage five, apprentice at the wellspring. Stage six, artisan in the wild orchard. Stage seven, master in the grove of elders. Stage eight, sage in the mountain cave. So that is a quick move around the wheel. Now there's a couple of things that are really important with this wheel. One is, is to know not only the specific place you're in, but the quadrant you're in. The south has a particular quality. So you're gonna embody a, a quality that you can see across each of these four stages. There's gonna be a similar quality there, a similar lesson that you're learning in the south. And then as you move out of the east into the west, when you're in the west, for these four stages, there's a similar quality there in which you're embodying. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, with the east and with the north. Mm -hmm. um, is there yeah. anything else you would like to add to that? I guess just to give even like a fuller context, mm -hmm. this wheel, as Hayden is saying, it's based in four directions right. um, of east, south, west, and north. Um, because a lot of traditional indigenous knowledge is based in the four directions mm -hmm. of the seasons, of the directions. Um, there's also qualities that come along um, with each of those aspects, like the East is a place of spirit, mm -hmm. um, and that's why death and birth, the veil is thinner mm -hmm. in the East between this world and other worlds. Um, in the South, it's a place of vibrancy, of emotion, that's mm -hmm. why puberty is the cornerstone of the South. Mm -hmm. um, it's a place of, yeah, a raw experience of exploration. And the place of the West is a place of mystery, mm -hmm. of darkness. It's why the soul initiation is the cornerstone. It's mm -hmm. where you go into the depths of the shadows and you bring back what has been invisible. Right. And then you find ways to create delivery systems and share that and offer that with your community. And then the North is the place of the adult. It's the place of the perseverant one. It's a place of the winter. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why the, the last four stages of the human wheel is in the north because these are practices of the adult mm -hmm. being able to offer in community the gifts mm -hmm. that they found through the earlier stages mm -hmm. of the wheel. Exactly. And there's an interesting quality here between the west and the east where the east is sort of a place of being and the west is more of a place of doing. Um, and so there's a difference here when you see up at the top when you're in the north of in, in stage six, you're sort of this this artisan that's really in this expressive, like mystery, creative space. And then when you enter stage seven, you're still doing, you're offering those gifts to the world, but you start to move towards being, where you're just occupying that. It's almost like an effortless expression. You're a master in the grove of the elders, moving towards the sage in the mountain cave, where people then come to you to receive the gifts instead of you going to them. So in this West state, there's a lot of movement, a lot of changing, a lot of transition. It's, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's not a surprise that we see a lot of society get stuck in stage three, because to truly enter into the West is to enter into the place of soul. It's to enter into the place of descent. It requires a complete upheaval in everything you thought you knew to be true. Mm -hmm. um, it requires a lot of chaos so that order can be found, so you can find the true self. It requires a ton of understudy into mystery, into death. You know, we have a really death phobic society. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of resistance into wandering into late adolescence and then in stepping into early adulthood. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, is there anything else we'd like to touch on? I guess we could talk about our personal stories in, in regards to this wheel. You know, I've really only come across this work over the last year or so. And it's been incredibly helpful for me because I've been in a very transitional phase you know, um, really moving out of sort of uh, the wanderer in the cocoon, leaving home. I mean, four years ago, I quit my job, quit everything, you know, sold most of my stuff and put a backpack on my back and started 
traveling around the world and thinking I was going to suddenly find something and come back and have something to offer. Yet there was still so much more of that wandering in the cocoon lesson that I needed to learn. And so when I came back home, I realized I still needed to go somewhere else. So I moved to San Luis Obispo. I've had so much movement. Then from there, had a, learned a lot of things and then moved into my van, which led me to, which was sort of like the next phase into soul discovery where we met at a vision fast where i really s sort of marked that ending stage of the wander into co cocoon to move into this apprentice at the wellspring because during that time over the past four years i've really been an understudy to the mystery really seeking the self you know letting a lot of society's projections and um, ways of being in the world that other people told me I should be or I, I just thought I should be based upon other examples, letting all of that die to really try to find my unique place in the world. What is my unique soul archetype? It was such a center of gravity for me, yet at the time I didn't have this wheel, so I didn't really know that. I just saw myself like sort of like, not really buying in anymore to what you know, society at large and a lot of my old friends and old influences were suggesting and feeling sort of lost, mm -hmm. you know, and I felt like if I would have had this tool then, it would have been so much better and maybe I could have progressed through this stage quicker, not to say that that's important, time mm -hmm. isn't really something to look at here, but more presence, you know, instead of being so anxious about where I was and trying to be something else, really accepting where I'm at. And I feel so blessed to have come across this tool at this time as I transition from the wander of the cocoon into the apprentice at the wellspring, which is all the tasks are both terrifying and absolutely beautiful mm -hmm. because they're challenging. They're places of edge, they're places of growth. Mm -hmm. And so while this apprentice at the wellspring is really beautiful, it's a time of creativity. It's a time of moving from needing to try to find self to true embodying self like this image that i've been gifted you know relatively recently of like who i am and what gifts i might have to offer to the world now needs to be brought into my being so it requires even a lot a lot of shifting a lot of changing and acting in the world moving towards your fears and so now with this tool and a lot of other tools that will show or or ways of perceiving that we'll talk about in other videos um, i'm able to sort of create a map or framework and sort of rest in the gifts that are now the lessons that are now um, and really own the task at the time um, mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. thank you for sharing yeah I relate in a lot of ways I think I've been familiar with some of this work for the last three or four years and I've continually found it so relieving and helpful mm -hmm. um, for a lot of the same reasons around just being able to locate where I'm at and in locating, for me, like there's a permission to lean in more fully mm -hmm. um, rather than resisting or thinking I should be somewhere that I'm not. Um, for the last several years, I had also been in the wander in the cocoon, trying to seek out mystery, the underworld. I think it was about three and a half years ago that I experienced one of Bill Plotkin's, um workshops through Animus Valley, a Soulcraft Intensive, and I think that was one of an early soul encounter experience mm -hmm. that I had um, of recognizing some archetypes within myself, of acknowledging some loyal soldiers and kind of giving them permission to not need to be the main um, attributes that were kind of dictating my life mm -hmm. day to day. Um, and so I was, and then I put myself on a vision fast two years ago, and then we had our vision fast mm -hmm. this past summer and so there were all these ways that I was trying to seek self-initiation mm -hmm. I was trying to study with the darkness and the mystery and really create conditions where I could encounter my soul more mm -hmm. fully and I would say that it was probably our vision fast and really having that full container held in community for an extended period of time where that was like an initiatory process where I crossed over um, into the apprentice at the wellspring which was also like perfectly timed with also leaving kind of my first adulthood life mm -hmm. where I'd been trying to fit in ways of initiation and mystery mm -hmm. but because of my day-to-day -day commitments as a social worker as a therapist um, there really wasn't like the time and space that I knew how to create to create a life condition mm -hmm. where I could deeply complete the task that was needed to be completed mm. um, whereas when I kind of 
left that first adulthood and leaned more fully into what can and could my life look like if I were committed to cultivating my soul gifts mm -hmm. and committed to finding delivery systems that are authentic and real and mm -hmm. true and that hold such a bigger vision of what I know to be possible mm -hmm. from within myself and in relationship to the more than human world. Um, that's when I think I really crossed that threshold into the apprentice at the Wellspring. Mm -hmm. And then this fall and winter has been such a study in that. The mm -hmm. task of the apprentice mm -hmm. is learning delivery systems to embodying soul in culture. Yep. And I could not sum up what this time is more fully for me and I know for you as well as we kind of stumble in the darkness of mm -hmm. how to bring this project of seeds to culture, to people, right. to community in a way that's tangible, that's helpful, that's useful, that's exactly. accessible. It's coming from such a deep depth place of mm -hmm. our soul roaded knowing that we are at a time collectively of immense movement and possibility and transition and how do we support that process at all scales mm -hmm. with the earth, within ourselves, with each other in alignment with larger issues of justice and solidarity. Mm -hmm. um, I think we are very much trying to create the gift of that is visionary action and inspiration we are very much trying to study how do we offer that gift through our day-to-day -day life and the work that we're contributing exactly yeah. mm -hmm. beautifully put thank you for that share yeah, yeah and this this is a this is a stumbling along <laughs> attempt to embody and really step into our apprentice at the wellspring to try to learn delivery systems to try to offer mm -hmm. and, um, uplift and uplift the tools, the tools that, that are, are already available, available that yeah. are really helping us right. through this process Definitely. Um, so that we can you know maybe share something that could possibly help you mm -hmm. and one thing I wanted to mention in this wheel is that unfortunately due to a lot of our societal influences and how a lot of us were raised um, not because of anyone's fault just because of like the times and and where we're at in mm -hmm. in this you know cosmic journey is um, we've really lost a lot of this wisdom and truth and knowing and so many of us only receive partial like not the full gift or lessons of each of the previous stages that we've been in mm -hmm. and we might move through if phases because naturally we're going to move through phases this isn't something that we try to do this isn't something you you don't just try to become the artisan in the wild orchard or the master in the grove of the elders mm -hmm. it is what what your life is offering mm -hmm. you it mm -hmm. is the lessons that you're incorporating every single day which allow the soul to grow to learn and then to be pulled towards a new way of being mm -hmm. and so even though many of us get stuck in that stage three there is a soul pulling to try to continue on mm -hmm. to try to gain these lessons mm -hmm. and if and if we haven't incorporated some of the lessons of stage one and stage two mm -hmm. that can get really distorted and there can be what we call a lot of sub personalities which we'll make a separate video on a lot of things that get in the way of our development and sort of begin mm -hmm. to tear us apart and mm -hmm. they really do because there's this is an energy this is an evolutionary energy that's trying to move mm -hmm. in a in a certain direction mm -hmm. and like we can try to block that Mm -hmm. try to avoid that or we have all these different ways of like getting in our own way mm -hmm. but eventually that's going to erupt you know mm -hmm. and it can be catastrophic through midlife crises and these complete explosions of your life mm -hmm. or there's something that you can walk towards consciously and consciously untangle the knots from our past mm -hmm. um, to help ourselves move into our future mm -hmm. um, so don't be concerned don't like beat yourself up because you might be in a certain stage mm -hmm. but just embody that stage and then we'll talk about in future videos mm -hmm. how we can sort of unwrap or identify where we're at mm -hmm. sort of unwrap what's what's holding us back mm -hmm. um, and allow ourselves to really sink into what's being offered in the now right and what's hopeful about all that like you're saying is throughout the entire wheel no matter where you are there's always an open invitation mm -hmm. and possibility to return to aspects of earlier stages to mm -hmm. 
to study with that and to cultivate the right. uncomplete, the incomplete tasks of that phase. So I know for myself, like, because of my particular upbringing in different ways, like, my sense of innocence, like, was, it was affected, it was impacted mm -hmm. at an early age. And so it's been an important part for me to, like, really create time and space of like a set creating a sense of safety in the natural world mm -hmm. to experience innocence and wonder and mm -hmm. awe which are incredible gifts of the young child right. to be in awe and to be in full presence because you're safe and that you know you're connected and you're held and so to study those and come back to them at any stage in your life will help then like that evolutionary movement that's trying to right. work through you to be able to help move you along the wheel right. at later stages wherever you are exactly because these aren't isolated stages they're incorporated so they become part of you and are necessary once you've incorporated them that's how you move to the next stage because they're necessary for you to learn the lessons in the next stage mm -hmm. so innocence to be able to, to have innocence allows you to then have wonder so to keep your innocence to hold that and that's really the task of the adults that's the task of the elders that's the task of the caretakers of the young infant mm -hmm. to keep and maintain that innocence so then when they move to stage two they can explore mm -hmm. freely because they feel mm -hmm. safe in the world and wonder the, the, to be able to hold that gift of wonder in stage two allows them to move into stage three mm -hmm. because they're able to explore now with an expansive mind mm -hmm. and so we'll talk about each of these different places um, in separate videos and dive into the depths of them because they're all important. Mm -hmm. They're all important to understand. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. yeah, thank you so much for yeah. sharing this time with us. I hope you can use this um, wheel for your advantage. If you want to dive into more um, deeply into the wheel, Nature and the Human Soul by Bill Potkin, um, really that's where we've taken this from and there's a lot of information there you can look up online just search for soul centric um, development wheel uh, Bill Plotkin you can throw that in there and you'll find this and find some more information and stay tuned for mm -hmm. some more videos um, yes. blessings, blessings. And safe and adventurous mm -hmm. journeys friends. exactly yeah mm -hmm.